Okay. Uh, with respect to B-spin curves, <coughs> last time we had derived this uh, expression that uh, if you consider any curve segment, then for a second degree curve, then that can be given by this expression. This means that if you have a set of control points and a curve is defined using these control points, then for some portion of the curve, we will have three points, let us say this is i minus 1, this is pi and this is pi plus 1. These three points will together define this curve segment using this kind of relationship. Okay. And this essentially means that if we consider the shape function for these three points or for any of these points for that matter, they will look like this. where there are different not values. Okay, so, let us say this is the shape function for the ith point. If I look at the next point, that will have a shape function which will be effective from here, but will have an identical shape to this. The shape function after that will look something like this. Okay, so, all these shape function are, shape functions are periodic in nature and that is that these, uh, this formulation is called a periodic B spline curve. <coughs> okay. And if we define uh, B spline curves in this manner, the total number of curves for a given n points will be n minus 1, total number of curve segments. Okay. So, we will have n minus 1 curve, uh, curve segments defined by this kind of relationship. Okay, the first one will be for i equal to 1 that means between p0, p1 and p2, the next one will be between p1, p2 and p3 and so on. Okay. So, this is for the case of uh, B-spline curves with k equal to 3 and so far we are considering only those curves where the two endpoints are not the same. That means, we are, we are talking of open B-spline curves, we have not yet talked of closed uh, B-spline curves. Uh, for periodic B-spline curves, if you look at a figure, okay, if you look at this figure, you are given 6 points P0, P1, P0, P1, P2, P3, P4 and P5. Okay, and if you look at this curve which is mentioned with k equal to 3, that is the periodic curve for k equal to 3 and as, as I had explained last time, a periodic curve does not start from the end point. It will, in this particular case, it will start from the midpoint between P0 and P1. This is for second degree curves. Okay. This curve for, uh, which is mentioned with k equal to 3, that is the curve you have to look at. Okay. Another property that is seen for curves specifically with k equal to 3 is that if you consider line joining let us say P4 and P3, the curve will be tangent to that curve. Okay, you see at this point, this line joining P3, P4 at the midpoint, this B spline curve is tangent to it. Okay, similarly, the line joining P2, P3 at the midpoint, the curve is crossing it but tangentially. Okay, this will happen, this happens only in the case of k equal to 3 curves, that means second degree B spline curves. If we consider third degree B-spine curves, they do not start from the starting point, they do not start from the midpoint, but they start from some other point totally. Okay, so this point is a starting point for k equal to 4 curve with the same set of control points. And similarly here, this point is the end point for this curve. Okay, and the number of curve segments, we will see the number of curve segments is n minus 1 when k is equal to 3. Okay, and when k is equal to 4, the number of curve segments will be n minus 2. Okay. 
the uh, the formulation for <coughs> k equal to four case would be p of u is equal to one sixth of And I exists between one and n minus two. Okay, well, because the last point that we are saying is I plus two. Okay, and the last point is P n. So the number of curved segments will go up to n minus two. Okay. Similarly, for a general k degree curve, the number of curved segments will be n minus k plus two. Okay, this is for uh, general uh, curve with degree k minus one. Okay, this will be the total number of curve segments in the case of a open periodic B spline curve. Is that okay? And for the k equal to four case, the blending function. Look like a cubic. Look like a cubic curve spanning four knot ranges. Okay, and the next one will of course again be. It will be. Uh, it will have the uh, same function, but with the stagger. And so on. Okay, if we look at the shape functions. <coughs> okay, this is giving the four shape functions for uh, k equal to three. Okay, this f one three is the first shape function, f two three is the second shape function, and f three three is the third shape function. Three shape functions for k equal to three. Okay, this is. All within one single range. That means I drawn this uh, figure. Okay, in this figure, if you look at this particular range, this is where three points are effective. One shape function look like looks like this. One looks like this, and the third looks like this. Okay, the exact shape is like this. This is for k equal to three. Okay, and for k equal to four, the shape functions look like this. This is one four, and four four is symmetric, like this. Okay, two four is like this, and three four is like this. Again, they're symmetric. Okay, and for any curve segment, we have four points which are effective. And again, the starting point can be computed by looking at these vertices. Okay, so this is the let's say we look at the first curve segment, which is between P zero, P one, P two, and P three. <coughs> the uh, vertices to be given to each of the four points will be given by the values at the first at the starting of the curves. Okay. Similarly, the endpoint will be computed by these four vertices. Okay. This is in the case of open periodic B spline curves. Okay. And I've already mentioned that the kind of continuity that will be there at the curve segments will be of the order of k minus two or c k minus two. Okay, that means when k is equal to three, we'll have c one continuity at these points, and when k is equal to four, we'll have c two continuity at these points. Okay. Any questions up to this point? Oh, 
okay in that case let's take the next uh, formulation in the case of b spline uh, uh, curves that is if we have a set of points and we want to have the first and the last point the same okay then if you remember in the case of uh, bezier curves we have defined a closed curve in which the first and the last points were same and we got a curve which was something like this okay now if we do a similar thing in the case of b spline curves let's say again if we start with k equal to 3 we have one curve defined by these three points that will look something that will be let's say this curve segment the next curve defined by these three points the next one is defined by these three and so on the last curve will be defined by these three points okay but we can go a step further and then define another curve by these three points okay if you are talking of periodic curves okay if i define a closed curve like this which is let's say to start with non periodic then the non periodic curve let's say for k equal to 3 we start from this this point and this point and it will look something like this this is how it will look like it's not going to start from this point it will be starting from the midpoint of this edge and the midpoint of this edge okay so even though my first and the last point are the same my curve is not a closed curve okay so if i have to define a closed curve the way to define that would be that i'll have to take these three points and define another curve segment and so on okay so when i'm <coughs> defining the curve using pi minus 1 pi and pi plus 1 i'll actually have to take these three points in a cyclic order okay and what we'll do is we'll define every curve segment between pi minus 1 pi pi plus 1 and we'll take a mod with n plus 1 okay so that my first curve is between these three next curve is between these three and so on and there will be another curve which is, which will be defined by these three points as a result of that we'll get a continuous curve between these between the given between all the control points and the actual curve instead of starting from here or here it will look like a closed curve which might be something like this okay let's have a look at it and then we'll see the <coughs> details so look at this curve this is a closed curve closed periodic b spline curve with n is equal to 5 that means you have total of 6 points and k is equal to 4 that means a cubic closed b spline curve okay now we have this curve segment all the marks that you are seeing these are the different boundaries of the curve segments okay so you have one curve segment here which is controlled by four points which are p5 p0 p1 and p2 probably okay next curve segment is controlled by the next four points and so on and this it doesn't touch any of the lines it won't touch any of the lines That was for k equal to three, only for k equal to three. Okay, so this won't touch any of the lines. It won't pass through any of the points. Okay, but it will be within the <coughs> polygon formed by or the within the convex hull of the control points. Yeah. Start from anywhere for k equal to four. Like for k equal to three, it starts at the midpoint. Yeah, this will start from a point which you can find out. as i said by looking at the value of the blending functions at the starting point okay so it will start from a point which will be given by let's say this is about 0.75 and this is about 0.15 okay so 0.15 times p0 
plus 0.15 times P2 plus 0.7 roughly times P1. You take a combination of these three points that is what will give you the starting point okay, which is not the midpoint which is not the uh, which is not a control point okay. Looking at this, so you will find that each of these you will find that each of these curve segments are controlled by four points okay, but the four points will now go on in a cyclic manner. There will be one curve segment controlled by P4, P5, P0 and P1. Another curve segment will be controlled by P3, P4, P5 and P0. Another curve segment will be controlled by P5, P0, P1 and P2. Okay, and the number of control segments will be the same as the number of points. Okay, if you have n plus 1 points, you have n plus 1 control segment. Uh, and n plus 1 curve segments okay i'll just <coughs> okay so uh, our control points are something like this okay and a curve or something like this But these are the curve segments. Okay, if you look at let's say the first curve segment that is between P0, P1, P2, and P3, let's say. So one is defined between P0 to P3, the next one will be defined between P1 to P4, P2 to P5. Now, when you say P3 to P6, we are taking the mod with n plus 1. Okay, in this case, we have taken n equal to 5. It will be for up to P6 mod with 6, which is the same as P0. Okay, the next one will be P4 to P7 mod 6. All the numbers that we are taking are mod with 6. Okay, and P5 to P8 mod 6. Okay, so that is how we will get the 6 control segments, 6 curve segments, sorry. Okay, and if we look at uh, this formulation. This is of course for k equal to 3. For k equal to 3, then uh, earlier the number of curve segments that we had was from 1 to n minus 1. Now it will become i will be between 1 and n plus 1. Okay. Even when k is equal to 4, the number of curve segments will remain the same. Okay. The number of curve segments will be the same as the number of points. Okay, any questions up to this point? <coughs> okay. Then let us see some of the properties that we have seen of the B spine curves so far. First is Okay, let us start with non periodic uh, B spline curves. First is they give us local control. Okay, and this is true for all uh, B spline curves, whether they are periodic, non periodic, closed, or open, they will always give us local control. Which is governed by the degree of the curve. Okay. Then they are contained within the convex hull. Okay. 
okay and as you seen for bezier curves they don't oscillate okay in fact when we say that they are contained within the convex hull for b spine curves this property is much stronger than that for bezier curves what that means is if we have a set of control points like this <coughs> and we are considering let's say k equal to for the sake of argument to start with 3 okay if we consider any point and we consider k points to one side and k points to the other side whatever convex hull will get from these points the curve segment corresponding to this will lie within this convex hull <coughs> it won't go beyond this convex hull even if you have other points okay that means the effect of this will remain within this convex hull okay even if i move it from here to here the convex hull will change like this so the, the my curve my curve segment corresponding to these points will remain with, within this it won't go beyond this convex hull okay so this this convex hull property of b spine curves is stronger than that of uh, bezier curves okay and this property is of course shared by periodic as well as closed uh, b spine curves okay then <coughs> if we come to periodic curves okay these do not pass through end points okay you have the same blending function i'm using an abbreviation blending function for all points okay and you have a same description a same formulation of all curve segments okay and of course i should have mentioned here itself that when i'm talking non periodic curves and of course for all other types of b spine curves the degree of continuity is c k minus 1 continuity c k minus 2 continuity sorry okay so if my k is equal to 3 i'll have c1 continuity my k is equal to 4 you'll have c2 continuity and so on at Uh, curve endpoints. Curve segment endpoints. And okay, so degree of continuity will be C K minus two. Okay. <coughs> okay. Then same formulation for all the curve segment. This is for periodic uh, B splines. If we look up the properties of Closed B splines. Okay, the first thing that is done is we have a cyclic definition. Okay, and. we say smooth curves are possible okay in the case of bezier curves our closed curves are not smooth in this case we are getting smooth curves as a closed uh, we spent curves okay So this is the main difference, as far as closed curves are concerned, with respect to Bezier curves. 
okay and, I, and of course it can be shown that all these uh, b spline curves they are a generalization of the bezier curve okay in fact you can say these are a generalization of <coughs> of bezier that means if we take k equal to n Okay, that means if we take the degree of the uh, curve to be the same as the number of points, in that case, a B spline curve will become similar to a Bezier curve. Your know, local control property will be lost, and we'll get a almost a uh, global control. Okay, so a non-periodic curve will be a generalization of the Bezier curve. Okay, and of course, non-periodic curves for lower uh, values of k, for k equal to one and k equal to two. They can also give us line segments and uh, discrete points. Okay, so even line segments can be modeled as B, uh, as B spine curves. Okay, just uh, one more point. That is, I have mentioned that B spine curves follow or fall within a convex hull, which is something like this. Okay, which means that if I have a set of control points. Which are, let's say, I have a set of linear points here, okay, and then a set of control points after this. My curve, let's say, might look something like this, but in this portion, it will become a straight line, okay, and then again, it might go like this. Okay, so portions of my B-spline curves can be straight line. It can pass through some of the control points in that case, not otherwise. Okay, this kind of thing cannot happen in the case of Bezier curves. So, <coughs> it will actually pass through all those points or it might be also be line parallel to these points? No, it has to pass through all these points because <coughs> my, con my convex hull of these points is a straight line. It has to fall within the convex hull. Okay, so this is with respect to B spline curves. Any questions with respect to B spline curves? What will happen to the Bezier curve? In this case, what will happen to a Bezier curve? Okay, a Bezier curve within these points will lie within the convex hull, and the convex hull looks like this. Okay, so my curve might look something like this. Okay, this is my Bezier curve. This is a complete convex hull. My curve will lie within these bounds. Okay, but the B spline curve that can vary depending on the degree. Local control is there. There is a lot of local control. Okay, of course, the other property that if you have a number of Points considered at the same place. Okay. My curve, let's say, if it is initially like this, and I have multiple points here, my curve will get, pull, get pulled towards it. That will happen even in the case of B-spline curves. Okay, but if I have too many points at the same place, my curve might even pass through that. Okay, that is again because if I have multiple points here, my convex hull becomes a single point. My curve has to go through that uh, point. Okay. Any questions on anything regarding modeling of curves? Okay. In that case, I'll uh, initiate the next uh, topic, that is modeling of surfaces. Okay. And uh, we'll go into the details of surface modeling only in the next class. <coughs> so, okay. <coughs> 
we are talking about modeling a surface patch let's say this is a general three dimensional surface okay typically when we had curves we are modeling them by a single parameter so if we had a curve like this we are saying that p of u or p will depend only on one parameter that is u okay now since we have a, uh, a surface we cannot model by one single parameter for a parametric definition we need two parameters and typically we will take two parameters one which varying in this direction the other varying in a orthogonal direction okay or varying in the other direction so let us say if we say at this point we take this curve to be a u equal to 0 curve and for this patch if we take this to be a u equal to 1 curve that means my parameter u is varying in this direction and similarly I take a parameter v varying in this direction ok so at this point I get v equal to 0 and at this point at this curve I get v equal to 1 ok so if I take any arbitrary curve like this and a curve like this My this curve let us say has some value of vi, vi and let us say this curve has some value of u which is let us say uj. Okay, for u is changing from 0 to 1 for successive curves, let us say this particular curve has u equal to uj. Okay, so essentially I am looking at this surface as a uh, as a family of curves in this direction and a family of curves in this direction ok and any arbitrary point here can be expressed as a function of u and v ok so typically we can write p of u v as an uh, equation of any point here can be written as some function of uh, the different control points or whatever ok if we look upon some standard surfaces ok and I express them in a parametric form let us say we can say we think of an ellipsoid ok we will say x will a cos u cos v y will be equal to let us say b cos u sin v and z will be equal to let us say c sin u ok this is a uh, equation of a ellipsoid where u lies between minus pi by 2 to pi by 2 and let us say v lies between 0 and 2 pi ok if you write it in an intrinsic form we will get x by a whole square plus y by b whole square plus z by c whole square will be equal to 1 <coughs> okay, so this is the equation of an ellipsoid. This way, similarly, you can write uh, equations for a cylinder and for uh, other standard forms of uh, curves. Okay, if, you, uh, if you're just talking of a simple cylinder, okay, the equation of a cylinder in a parametric form can be written as x is equal to let's say r cos u y is equal to r sin u ok and z is equal to let us say w or z is equal to v ok where the second parameter just gives the height the first parameter is controlling the uh, a point on the circumference ok this is a simple equation for a cylinder similarly you can write for a sphere and so on 
Okay, so parametric forms for standard uh, surfaces can easily be written like this. Okay, another very standard uh, type of surface is what is referred to as a surface of revolution. Okay, that means if we have any arbitrary curve like this and we revolve it about let us say <coughs> let us say about the z axis okay. as I revolve this curve about the z axis I will get a swept surface okay so the equation of that uh, swept surface how do we write that let's say the equation of this is given by some p of u okay if this is an arbitrary curve which can be defined using any formulation then what will be the equation of this surface okay p of u means let's say the x value is given by x of u y value is given by y of u the z value is given by z of u Okay, so if you look at uh, the surface of revolution that we can write down as x will be equal to x of u times let us say cos w, y will be y of u times sin w and z will be the same as z of u. Okay, I am rotating it about the z axis. So, this is a simple parametric equation and any arbitrary curve is rotated about the z axis. If it is rotated about any other axis, you can write the transformation and get the equation and so on. Okay, so, this is with respect to uh, curve ge uh, surface generated by revolving a given curve. Okay, but if we are talking of a surface patch, <coughs> which is of this form. Okay, then a surface patch is not being or need not be generated by a set of curves in this manner. Okay, by taking a curve and revolving it out a standard form like that. So what we will see now that if we have let's say a, uh, or if you want to define a cubic surface patch, that means we want to define a surface patch such that each of these curves is a parametric cubic curve, or if each of these curves is a Bezier curve or a Bespan curve. Okay, that means this surface we will call that either a, a cubic surface or a basis surface or a B-spline surface. Okay, how can we formulate the surfaces in that case? Okay, so, in order to formulate cubic curves or bicubic surfaces, we will just extend our earlier definition that we had given. Okay, if you remember for curves we had said P of u we said is equal to a0 plus a1u plus a2u squared plus a3u cube okay or if you write it in a <coughs> long form or we can also write it as sigma ai u to the power i okay where i goes from 0 to 3 this is how we have defined our PC curves. So, for defining a bicubic surface patch, we will do a similar thing P of u v will say will be equal to sigma a i j u to the power i v to the power j, okay, where i goes from 0 to 3 and j also goes from 0 to 3. Okay, and of course, u and v they both lie between 0 and 1. <coughs> okay, and again, this we will say will be u times a matrix A multiplied by v, u a v, okay, where u is equal to 
u cube u square u 1 and v is equal to v cube v square v 1 ok and this matrix A is a set of coefficients that we have is this matrix obtained by these Aijs ok. So, this way we will find that this matrix consists of 4 by 4 terms 16 vector terms so, i is varying from 0 to 3 j is also varying from 0 to 3. So, we will get a set of 4 by 4 terms that is 16 terms in all and they are all vector terms. So, we want to transpose all this again we would be transpose of this. Again? We would be transpose of this. Right, thanks. <coughs> v will be a column vector and u is a row vector. Okay, or for sake of uniformity, we will put a transpose here. Okay, so this will be u a times v transpose. Okay, and if we uh, expand out the same thing, what we will be getting will be p of u. Oh sorry, P of u v will be a 3 3 u cube v cube plus a 3 2 u cube w square so on up the last term will be a 3 0 u cube here we will get a 2 3 u cube v cube u square v cube and so on ok. We will have a total of 16 terms ok the last term here will be a 0 3 w cube and the last term here will be a 0 0. Okay, so, we will get a total of 16 terms in this when we expand out this single expression ok this summation and this thing we can write it in a matrix form in this manner ok where A <coughs> is equal to So, this is how we will get the definition of a bicubic surface patch ok. The geometric property of this surface patch and how to get it in a geometric form and so on we will see that in the next class ok. We will go into details of this uh, uh, modeling only in the next class now.